Well, friends, today we are sampling some more Celine. Sensational. So, I sampled four Celine in my last video, and I was taken with one or two of them, but not all of them. And today we have the other four that Bry very kindly sent me. Thanks, Bry. And these are Rimbaud. For you. Eau de California. Dans Paris. And nightclubbing, I do believe. Yes. Tremendous. So, are we ready to crack on? Because I'm not. I'm just going to grab a device so that I can check up on some details about these. Let's see. Okay. So... Where are we? There we are. Let's try the first one, shall we? Which one shall that be? We'll choose this one, which is Don's Paris, I do believe. No, it's not. It's Older California. Chaotic. So, I'm imagining this one to be quite fresh. Um, if I remember correctly, this one doesn't have the powder in it, or one of them doesn't have the powder in it, you know? So it'll be interesting to see. Oh, right. This sample hasn't been sprayed before. Intriguing. I could be wrong though. I'm sure I read that somewhere though. Oh, to California. Here we go. So, notes are Palo Santo, Moss, Patchouli, Oris, and Bergamot. Oh, that's nice. You get the twang from that Bergamot straight away. And some greenness. Must be the moss. Very zesty at the top. Like twang zest. You know? That sort of thing. It's got a woody sort of aspect to it as well. So maybe that's the tree moss. Because it's not called oak moss. It says it's tree moss. Too good for the oak. Interesting. This one blatantly has a bit of powder in it, so it can't be this one that hasn't got the powdery note. I'm sure I read somewhere that one of them hasn't got the powdery note. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. That was particularly nice hydration as well. Good water. It's got a very zesty sort of thing. Um, beginning to get a bit to the Palo Santo. That must be the woody aspect. It must be. But you see. <coughs> excuse me. Palo Santo usually comes across as being quite creamy. So. That's strange. I like this, though. This is quite nice. A little bit of zest, a little bit of freshness without being, like, too cliche, you know? The bergamot's big in it, though. Um, I don't know what it smells like when it dries down. I did keep those sticks and have a smell the other day of the ones I've already tried, and I've got a couple of them that I'm going to try on skin. We'll see how they go. I'll do some first impressions on skin as well. I need to figure out a new format. If anybody's got any ideas about a new format for like doing first impressions or sampling, 
I remember Robes Away did this uh, series called Sample and Samples. Um, and it wasn't just first impressions, you know? It was like early impressions, and that's what Ramsey calls his, but I don't want to rip them off. But that is essentially what I want to do. I want to give like early, early impressions of different fragrances without it actually being the first impression, which is what all of these have been, you know? I've made a rod for my own back. Anyway, this is Dawn's Paris. Ah, this is like iris and iris and like powdery, you know, vanilla. Definitely, it's got like a, it's got like a, like a, it's got a, like a dessert kind of vibe going on. Sorry about the lightning as well. It's it's. Like there's clouds in the sky outside. The, the sky's black, you know. Oh, excuse me whilst I hydrate once again. So let's see what's in here. Vanilla, musk, coriander, laurel blossom and bergamot. Definitely getting the musk, definitely getting the vanilla. Not entirely sure what Laurel Blossom smells like. Let's have a look what Fragrantica says it smells like. Um, well, it's not telling us. In fact, this is the only perfume on Fragrantica's database that has Laurel Blossom in it. How strange. Um, so, big vanilla, big musk, little bit of bergamot. I imagine whatever this like tinge of greenness is, must be the laurel, you know? Weren't laurels what uh, Roman emperors used to wear on their heads? You know, when you see like, like, um, pictures of like Julius Caesar and stuff like that, drawings and stuff, it's always got like the leaves on the head. I think they're laurels. It's nice, but it's a little bit boring. I've got to be honest. <clears throat> Especially when you've smelled everything else from the house. The, the, each different fragrance has got... Some of them have got very slight differences between them, you know. There's nothing like, like ragingly standing out here. I'm going to save Nightclub until last because apparently that is very different. But this is like a vanilla, musky, powdery, soft, warm. It's as if like Heidi Slamani's had like had the chance to make like 10, 10 fragrances and just decided to make 10 slightly different versions of the same thing of what he really likes. You know? Like I would have made like some stuff that was very different. You know? I know reptiles are leather and and stuff. I, I haven't managed to find that sample that Eugene sent us, so it's not going to be included in this, I don't think, unless something changes. You never know. Um, next is Rimbode, and I think this was a later release than uh, 2019. Most of these were released in 2019 by these. This is, this is 2022, and the notes... Iris, Oris, Lavender, Neroli, Citruses, fucking Citruses, what Citruses, you know, White Flowers, which White Flowers, there are lots of White Flowers, which ones, Woody Notes, many different type, kinds of wood, Palo Santo's a wood, as is Oak, as is Ebony, you know, very, very different smelling, and Vanilla, also Vanilla, so there's Oris and Vanilla in this. Imagine my shock. I'm just thinking that, like, sorry, the spray on this is a bit cabbaged. Um, I'm just thinking that the budget that they must have had to use these must have been phenomenal because the the, the ingredient quality is brilliant, absolutely no doubt. But I can't help but feeling that they could have done a little bit something a little bit more expansive. 
lavender, big lavender, big lavender. Iris vanilla, very powdery, very soft. The lavender is beautiful. And it really mixes very well with that sort of powdery soft, um, powdery soft kind of iris. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. You might be able to hear I've got a bit of a frog. Never mind the frog. Getting the neroli now, strangely enough. <clears throat> Sorry. The neroli and the citrus sort of smell a bit like uh, Cologne Royale. By Dior. Neroli citrus. Strangely enough, the lavender is the big thing at the beginning. Huge at the beginning. And the vanilla sort of backed off a little bit. I imagine that comes out a bit later. This is lovely. This is really lovely. But they want £300. Well, they want £285 for, for 200 mil. It's a lot of juice, but that's a lot of money. You know? Um... It's very nice. The blending's really good. The ingredients are good. Um, but the, the like 15, 16, 17 years ago, this would have been like revolutionary, especially in men's fragrance. But it's not anymore. You know? These are these are very good fragrances, right? Very well made, but like seriously, if you if you've got a collection and you are looking for something more, you're not going to find it here. These are really good, but. They're not excellent because not because of the actual perfumes themselves, but because of the ideas behind it. There's nothing new going on here. I thought that when I smelled the other ones, even the ones I liked. Le Peau Neu. If that's how you pronounce it, which it almost certainly isn't. I'm not an authority on such things. Um, but I can't help but feeling like I've smelled all of this before. The thing I'm looking at, to be perfectly honest with you, the thing I'm looking at is Le Troisième Homme by Caron. Like, a lot of these smell like that, with a little riff on that, you know? But... What do I know? Anyway... We will move on to the next. Let's see what the brand says about this. Galbanum, white orris butter, patchouli, tree musk, vanilla and musk. Honestly, I think they've all got moss, vanilla, musk. You know, maybe they've even all got um, a little bit of patchouli in the base as well. There we go. This one's supposed to smell like um, like cigarettes and sweaty bodies and that kind of thing. If I remember what Eugene was talking about. Yes, immediately. It's not stale cigarettes, but like fresh cigarette smoke. You know when you've been out on the town and like everybody's been smoking or what it used to be because banned indoors now. But I do get that that cigarettes kind of vibe. Right, this is totally different. After everything I've just said, right, <laughs> this is completely different. I'm getting big galbanum. Something that smells like smoke, but isn't smoky. Like, it smells like when smoke gets on your clothes. Hmm. 
I'm getting the vanilla now and the galbanum. There's more going on here than what the notes are suggesting. Even on like the brand's own website, they're, they're not saying there's like a lot in it. In the blurb, it says, a perfume for night birds fed by the, the memory of Parisian nights during the palace on Bains du Cher era. A galbanum top note immerses us in an electric atmosphere with accents of nicotine on a musky and addictive patina, somewhere between the scent of crimson velvet seats and the sensuality of the nape of the neck, fragrant with vanilla. I don't know if it's the galbanum. You know how galbanum can come across a little bit like, not stale, but a little bit off? kind of what it feels like it's interesting it's very different from the other ones but it's also got a similarity and it's that oris slightly powdery sort of thing going on this smells like a woman's perfume after like five six hours you know like a like a classic sort of women's perfume but again Big similarities to Le Troisième Homme. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. So I will quickly go back through them. This is Rimbaud. Yeah, it's like got that fresh. Lavendery sort of powdery thing going on there. This is Eau de California, I do believe. Yes, it is. To me, that's nothing. Like, I don't understand the, the point. It's nice, it's well made, but it just feels a bit pointless, you know? This is Dom Paris. This has got a little bit of a marzipan note now. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. That's just, just the much of a muchness, you know. And then nightclubbing. I like this the most out of the four. Um, I'll keep my eye on this one and see how it goes. So, there we have it. My thoughts and first impressions. Maybe I'll call it early thoughts. If you've got any ideas what to call a series about initial impressions, early impressions, something that isn't first impressions, because when I do first impressions, I feel like I've got to, they've got to be the first time I smell them, you know? Whereas I could probably give a, a more informative video that wasn't, it didn't have to be the first time. I'll still do some first time impressions, but yeah, something a bit different maybe. Anyhow, thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope to see you all again soon. Bye.